From WXII 12 News, this is breaking news. That breaking news tonight comes to us from Hawaii, where authorities are responding to a shooter at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. In the last few minutes, the military says that a sailor shot and wounded three civilian employees with the Defense Department before killing himself. Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickman tweeted that the gates are back open at the base and it can be accessed again following a lockdown. Keep it right here on WXI 12 and the CW for any new information. New tonight, construction is officially underway on a pedestrian bridge in Winston-Salem that's part of a $2 million project to spice up the city in an artistic way. Our Brandon Bates talked with the developer of the new project and joins us now from downtown as crews start the process. Well, as you can see, work is already underway here at the Green Street Pedestrian Bridge. This is just one of many projects aimed at making the city a little more walkable with a creative touch. Winston Salem is known as being the city of art uh, with having the first arts council across the country and innovation because of the kinds of things that we're doing. The Creative Corridors Coalition is behind the project and privately funded the entire thing. The group is also known for several other artistic structures around town like the Twin Arches on 52 and the Strollway Pedestrian Bridge. The Green Street Bridge will cross over Business 40 in its current location, connecting the West Salem neighborhood with bb and Ballpark. It's, it's uniting us. It's, it's pulling us together. So you've got several parts that are going to be placed together to create this one piece, and that's what we're hoping that we become one community and not a divided community. Officials with the coalition say this is just the beginning, and doing these types of visually appealing structures helps the city tremendously. What makes it extremely different is the community processing that we went through to try to identify and raise dollars to do that. So rather than it just being a governmental piece, there are public dollars, there are private dollars, there are volunteer hours that went into making this happen. She says this will serve as an iconic gateway into downtown Winston-Salem. And as you can see, still a lot of work that needs to be done here. Officials say this bridge should be finished by the middle of next year. Reporting in Winston-Salem, Brandon Bates, WXII 12 News. Brandon, thank you. A highway connector is permanently going to close next week in Forsyth County. The DOT is going to close the road connector between highways 52 and 66 on Monday. This is just the connector. The highways themselves won't close. The connector is going to be replaced by a new tie for the Winston-Salem Northern Beltway. Panthers Nation is still reeling from the news that their winningest coach has been fired. Ron Rivera has been part of that organization, the NFL that is, since 1984. 35 years since he first entered the league as a player for the Chicago Bears. Rivera has had coaching tenures with the Bears, the Eagles, and the Chargers since the 90s. He got the chance to be a head coach for the first time in 2011 when the Panthers hired him. Now Rivera is walking away with two Coach of the Year titles and a Super Bowl appearance. This morning he said he is not ready to hang it all up. My intent is to coach again. You know, I love coaching, I, and, and, and not just coaching because it's about winning football games, but coaching because you have an opportunity to impact young men and people, and uh, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to coach people and impact people and win football games and hopefully win a Super Bowl. The players had a scheduled day off yesterday and found out that Rivera got fired, mostly like the rest of us, online. In the Cats locker room today, it was an emotional atmosphere. Our Kirsten Gutierrez talked with some of the players and shares how they're handling all the changes in Charlotte. It's a tough time for the Carolina Panthers. Definitely a somber atmosphere when talking to the players. They say they're sad and some are shocked, but they say that Ron Rivera was a great coach, but an even better man. This is as bad a day as I've been a part of in the NFL. Panthers tight end Greg Olson has only had two coaches in his 13 year career and Ron Rivera was his coach for the last nine. Anytime there's change, you know, your first instinct is that you let them down, you know, and it just, you know, you, you just play back so many different things that could have gone different. What could you have done different? What fire could you have put out? What play could you have made? What game could have went different to make all this not be the case. Many players like Olsen wish they could have done something to prevent his departure. It makes me sad because he's he's the only head coach I've ever had and I've been very fortunate to have the opportunity to play with him and um, he's taught me a lot not only about football but about about life. But the team knows it all comes down to business in the NFL. You know someone told me when I first came in that um, NFL stands for not for long revolving door and, and all I got to say is I'm, I'm so appreciative You know, I can speak for myself coach of drafted me uh, you know top 10 meaning he really believed in me 
Uh, he gave me a shot, and um, he's been nothing but you know a role model and a mentor to all of us. A mentor to many, and a coach these Panthers players will never forget, and one they know will be back on the sideline in no time. His resume speaks for itself. Uh, I believe he had number one defense in the league um, when he was younger, won the Super Bowl, took his team to a Super Bowl. Um, his resume speaks for itself. This is definitely an emotional time for the Carolina Panthers team, but player Christian McCaffrey tells me they need to focus on winning Sunday and finishing out this season strong. They say they wish nothing but good luck to their former coach. In Charlotte, Kirsten Gutierrez, WXI 12 News. Thanks, Kirsten. Nearly 700,000 people could lose access to food stamps. The Trump administration wants to tighten requirements with a new rule aimed at making sure people are working for their benefits. The rule focuses on one specific group, work-eligible, able-bodied adults without dependents between the ages of 18 and 49. They have to work 20 hours a month in order to get benefits, but current laws allow states to waive that requirement. Many say the program's being abused, while other people argue it plays an important role in helping people get out of poverty. The new rule will go into effect this April. Second Harvest Food Bank says the proposed rule changes would have a devastating effect on hundreds of thousands of people across the state, including many here in the triad. Our Steve King spoke with the food bank's CEO about what kind of demand it would put on the nonprofit. The Second Harvest Food Bank of Northwest North Carolina warehouse distributes 38 tons of food each day. But food bank leaders say this would not be nearly enough food to make up for the loss of SNAP benefits if the administration's proposals are approved. SNAP provides nine meals for every meal that we provide. Again, we work in partnership, but it's together we can address this issue of hunger. We, neither of us could do it alone. Second Harvest Food Bank CEO Eric Aft says 300,000 people across North Carolina could have their SNAP benefits restricted or their eligibility eliminated under the proposals because uniform limits on eligibility would be imposed nationwide. The impact is very real, hitting thousands of people right here in the triad. And the biggest issue and concerns that we have with the administration's proposals is that they take away control from North Carolina and our legislature. AFT also says some students would lose access to free and reduced lunch. Food should never be denied to anybody. It is the way that children succeed in school. It's the way that parents can concentrate and, and go to work and to be concentrate and be safe at work um, and to be present for their kids. So food should never be denied to any family member and any child. It is critical in everything that we do. We know it every single day, and why should that be different for somebody who is, who is poor or facing economic hardship? Now, if the proposals are approved, we would find out sometime before the spring. Reporting in Winston-Salem, Steve King, WXII 12 News. Steve, thank you. Tonight, Greensboro police are trying to find out who's responsible for a deadly shooting. It happened this morning. Officers say they found Aaron Thomas in front of a home on Brown Boulevard just before 11. Thomas died later on at the hospital. Police say the shooter may have been in a dark, possibly black colored sedan headed toward Willow Drive. Anyone with information about this shooting is asked to call Greensboro police. The number on your screen, 336-373-1000. Happening now, there is a $1,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in a shooting case involving a five-year-old girl. It happened last night in Craven County. The sheriff's office says Amelia Brown was in a car with her mom when someone shot her in the head. Brown's aunt says Amelia had two successful surgeries and doctors are now trying to prevent brain swelling. The sheriff says he believes the shooting is gang-related. The impeachment inquiry entered its second public phase today. Members of the House Judiciary Committee heard from four expert witnesses. As Meredith Wood reports, their testimony provided insight and, of course, some controversy. The hearing is adjourned. The House Judiciary Committee wrapped up a day of marathon testimony. Four expert witnesses, all constitutional scholars, appeared before the committee to outline what constitutes an impeachable offense. That it wasn't just an abuse of power because the president was serving his own personal interests, but also an abuse of power insofar as the president was putting American national security interests behind his own personal interests. Three witnesses said President Trump's actions were impeachable. One disagreed. I believe this impeachment not only fails to satisfy the standard of past impeachments, but would create a dangerous precedent for future impeachments. 
But one comment sparked immediate backlash. Contrary to what uh, President Trump has said, Article 2 does not have, give him the power to do anything he wants. The Constitution says there can be no titles of nobility. So while the president can name his son Baron, he can't make him a Baron. That when you invoke the president's son's name here, when you try to make a little joke out of referencing Baron Trump, that does not lend credibility to your argument. It makes you look mean. First Lady Melania Trump condemned the remark, tweeting in part that Carlin, quote, should be very ashamed of your very angry and obviously biased public pandering. Carlin went on to apologize for the statement. It was wrong of me to do that. I wish the president would apologize, obviously, for the things that he's done that's wrong. But I do regret having said that. I'm Meredith Wood reporting.